Good morning, everyone, and thank you for your time here. And uh, we had uh, two amazing speakers uh, uh, before me. And um, my story is a very simple one. Uh, and I, uh, you might relate yourself listening to my story as a new immigrant moving uh, to Canada in 2008. Um, and how many of you know Thorncliffe Park? Okay, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's very close to Ontario Science Centre and uh, Don Mills and Overly is the closest intersection. A very vibrant, multicultural neighbourhood with uh, 30,000 people living in a 2.2 kilometre area. So it is, I think the way it has been designed keeps the community together and it's a landing mat for the immigrants. And uh, I was one of the immigrant uh, who came there and I came to know about Thorncliffe Park uh, through one of my husband's friend who had been living there and his family. And uh, the day I landed in Thorncliffe, um, you know, my husband and I, we felt that connection and a sense of belonging to that neighborhood. And originally I am from India and I spent few years in Saudi Arabia because my husband had been working for Arabian American oil company. So when I came to Canada, I was like, okay, I'm back to India, which is multicultural. And, uh, you know, everyone is so welcoming and you can connect with each other. And uh, it was my second day in Canada that I was walking in the local neighborhood park and uh, I was sitting on the bench with my children and I was looking at the park and wondering like why this park is not taken care of and I, I was really disappointed looking at the condition of the park and I questioned myself can I really be in North America here? Um, then I met few women there in the park and we all had the same issue. Everyone were complaining about this is not there, this is not being taken care of. And then like I thought like why do we complain? So if we want something better for our kids and people in this neighborhood, so we have to fix it. So this was how we discussed and formed a committee and a group which was Thorncliffe Park Women's Committee. Um, when I look back, um, how these, how I was interested in the community, why I want to get involved, maybe I relate that like um, my grandfather was very much involved in the community and my grandmother, she was always a homemaker and we grew up in a joint family. We were nine girls, all cousins and all and we went to the same school and uh, my gr grandmother used to prepare food and also I saw her as a woman with those skills. I saw my grandfather and my father with different skills. So I learned like, in, that was helpful when I came to Canada, like how do you use your skills whenever it's required? So I had a little bit of experience, uh, you know, accompanying him to different places and talking. Uh, to the community members with their issues and all. So when I started interacting with the people in the community, I didn't let them know that I was a newcomer because I was hesitant. If I say I'm a newcomer, people might not be comfortable in talking to me or might not be very friendly with me. So I was like, okay, so we are talking to each other and uh, people came with different issues and all. By supporting the other women, I was actually supporting myself. I was learning a lot of things and with their questions, I was doing a little bit of research and finding out what this means because I'm also in a new country and I was trying to navigate the system because everything is new here. Because, uh, uh, and the, other, the first important thing was volunteerism, which is so different here. And uh, I started uh, volunteering in a community services agency in the neighborhood. I volunteered uh, in the school. So morning I used to volunteer in the school and 
the rest of the day in the community services agency and in the evening times with the women's committee, you know, talking about the park and all. And my children used to be with me all the time. Even when I'm volunteering, the morning time she used to go to the kindergarten school. I am in the um, uh, kindergarten early language intervention program, you know, working with the kids with uh, speech difficulties. So that was amazing. Like my first year and the beginning, um, early stage of, uh, you know, moving to Canada, I was so involved and busy, like I was volunteering full time. And I was actually enjoying that because before the one day before I came to Canada, I that was my last working day at the school and I had to hand over everything. So I was in that, um, what should I say, um, the pace of working, you know, getting involved and being busy. And I have four kids. <laughs> so I'm busy at home and I want to be involved in the community. And I really wanted to bring that positive change in the neighborhood. I was trying my level best to see like if I can bring a smile on anybody's face. That was very important. So we started meeting with the counselor, we started meeting with the city staff and that was something very new for me. And there's all, always a culture of no. So for everything. We didn't want any kind of help, like um, financially. We just wanted them to give us the permission to do something in the park because the park was not taken care of. And then there is a recreation that the recreation center was closed for renovations and no recreational opportunities for the children in Thorncliffe. And the percentage of children between 0 to 14 in Thorncliffe is over 34% which is huge compared to the rest of Toronto. And Thorncliffe is a low income neighborhood um, and people can't afford to pay money and uh, you know, take their children or make sure that the children participate in the recreational activities. So we thought, why don't we use this public space as a place of engagement, a place where um, you know, people can come out from their crowded apartments and use the park as their backyard. So we started offering uh, arts and craft programming, uh, which is arts in the park program for us in an open environment. So we all, the women, we contributed, you know, the materials for the art and uh, the children started coming in the park and we were t speaking to the parents and we were talking about what they would like to see in the park and one of my um, friends she rolled the white sheet paper on the pathway and gave the crayons and the pens to the children and it said you know just put your ideas what would you like to see in the park so they we had everything from the residents from the children what they would like to see in the park and we made a list. So the first we invited the city staff and the councillor to come and visit our park and we gave them the tour. So it was a long wish list. So the first thing that came to our park was the garbage bins. So we celebrated getting the garbage bins in the park. So we did the clean up with the children. So it was such a big festival for us. We cleaned up the park, we filled out the garbage bins, and uh, we gave little incentives to the children who participated in the cleanup so that they feel a sense of belonging and have the ownership of the park, that this is their own park. And we also invited um, the local artists from the community to come and perform in the park like a simple science show or a story reading where children gathered and after each performance we encourage the kids to do the cleanup and we do it until today. So each day we do the cleanup in the park with the kids. We wanted to keep, we want every child and every person in Thorncliffe to have that ownership of the park. But sometimes people uh, misinterpret what ownership is. I had like recently a woman came to me when I used the word ownership she is like you know we pay the taxes how can you own the park oh my goodness I, 
the, you know, you also have the ownership of the park. So sometimes it is really challenging <laughs> to use those words. Um, in like now when you see in eight years, the park has completely transformed. We have got the splash pad, water fountain. We replaced the light poles. Um, we, we got the new light poles. We got the water, water um, fountain, um, a used playground e equipment. So we ran a campaign for the playground equipment that was in the park in 2005, I believe, which was removed for some safety reasons. And all the Toronto, uh, city of Toronto parks got the playground equipment back, except RV Burgess, and nobody had the answer for that. And uh, so when the other neighborhood, the other park, which is Leaside Park, which is part of Thorncliffe, it is not in the Leaside neighborhood, but the name is a little confusing here. So when they got the funding for the new playground equipment, though the existing playground equipment was a, in a good condition. So we had to request a local councillor and the park staffs, you know, to uh, move that, the existing playground equipment in Leaside Park, which is in a good condition, to RV Burgess. That's the local Thorncliffe Park. Um, and the city agreed to move that, th though we didn't get the new one, but we thought like, uh, you know, even the used ones is better than having nothing in the park. So we have a used playground equipment. And last year we got a paved pathway um, in the park. Uh, so now the park has really become a place of engagement because we thought when we started up, uh, you know, the, all these programs of arts and uh, everything in the park, we really wanted to because it's a highly immigrant neighborhood, especially for the women, we really wanted to make the, you know, break the barriers of culture, language, um, and even to the natural world. We really want uh, the people to come to a common place, especially the women, to meet their neighbors, to build that relationships, share information, and have fun in the park. In, so for that reason, in 2009, we introduced the concept of the market in the park. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for us was to bring the women out. Uh, it's a highly uh, South Asian community and most of uh, them have, you know, like we think most of the South Asian women don't allow, uh, so, sorry, men don't allow women to, you know, be on their own, to be independent. So when we introduced the concept of market, uh, men started approaching me, um, you know, to register the women for the market. So I was like, who will be in the mar market? Because we are having this market to support the women. So I would definitely encourage you to bring your wife, you know, so that she, builds confidence, that is what we wanted, that the women, even talking to other women, builds up that confidence, build that self-esteem. So they were okay with it. And then in the first two weeks, they accompanied the women to register their women for the market. But after third and fourth week, the women independently, they came, they felt, you know, they were comfortable in having a conversation with me. And it was amazing to see how these men supported the women for the market. It was for the women, it, those five hours on Friday night was so important for them that out of that week, they had five hours for themselves. And men brought all the stuff of the women to the market and they set up the table for their women and they take care of their children while these women take up the lead um, you know, and, uh, you know, setting up their stall and then having a conversation, building their clientele. So we started with five women in the park, which was 2009. And the best part of it was 
uh, the city of Toronto was on strike that year and we did not have to go through all the permit processes, we just <laughs> did it, it was a pilot for us and I myself was hesitant, I was also a newcomer and I was learning each day and uh, the park completely transformed like in the, that Friday night and the way Thoncliffe is beautifully designed, you have all high rise buildings. Uh, you know, facing the Don Valley and then the low rise and the mid rise in the center and the park is right in the heart of Thorncliffe. So from the high rise buildings, people can see what's happening actually in the park. So when they saw, thought, you know, saw that movement, you know, in the park, they just started informing their neighbors. It was all word of mouth because we didn't have anything to do, you know, to put in for the market, not even a dollar. So it was all our volunteer efforts, we got the tables and the chairs from the local agency, you know, and, um, and the agency closes at 6, so we have to store these tables and chairs somewhere else, then come next morning, early morning Saturday, and then put these things back into the office, when the office opens at 9, because they have the class at 9.30. It was a lot of work, but we really thoroughly enjoyed things. And the response we got from the community was huge. And we developed that relationship of trust among the women uh, in the neighborhood. And uh, this was really a women empowerment park model in Thorncliffe, which is so unique. So now in the park, we have Friday markets. We have arts in the park. We run two community gardens in the one in the park, one in one of the private properties, backyard, the container garden. And uh, we have fitness classes for the women. This is all, except for the market, all these programs are volunteer run. So we have women ha supporting us and we also run Flavors of Thorncliffe, which is a catering services. It's all word of mouth. We don't advertise m uh, much, it is too, the non-profit organizations who have the meetings, workshops, and nowadays with U of T, con, you know, if they have any conference and all, they place the order. And this catering is for the women who are not comfortable participating in the market as food vendors. So these is exclusively for the other women who don't get opportunities. And the market is for the women who really want to be in the market. And uh, in 2010, we started the permitting process, which is so huge with the parks. Uh, it's complicated as well. Um, and uh, the parks, had, the city has the culture of saying no to everything. And until last year, I had to go through the same cycle each year, explaining the city what this market brings to the community, to the women. And uh, because the challenge is our market also, because our market doesn't fall in the good food market category, nor in the farmer's market category. It is somewhere in between, because our vendors sell everything from clothing, jewelry, shoes, handbags, handicrafts, prepared food. And we also have a fresh produce stall as well because we encourage healthy eating in the community, especially for the children and youth. Um, so each year it's a challenge. We meet all the Toronto Public Health requirements. We meet all the parks requirements, which is so huge. And the market, um, there's also a permit fee for the market and an insurance of $5 million coverage, which is huge for us to you know, even recover. Um, the expense and uh, we also have a tandoor bake oven in the park which is a tandoor permanent tandoor structure and uh, when I sent this proposal to the city the city accepted uh, the proposal of having a tandoor uh, in two months I was very surprised like in two months you, you, I got a reply but it took two and a half years to actually bring the tandoor in the park because it was challenging for the city as well because they had to review their bake oven policy because all the Toronto city of Toronto parks have either pizza bake oven or the barbecue stands they never heard about the tandoor bake oven and this tandoor is um, 
the first in the North American parks. And uh, we thought like Tandoor would be an example of presenting a South Asian culture and heritage of this neighborhood. And we see families bringing in their children and say, showing them the tandoor. This is how the bread, and the children say, oh, this is how the bread is made. It's not from the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So children are learning that. And even with the garden, and our garden is an asset for the two schools that we have. One is the elementary school, and we also have exclusive to kindergarten school for the kindergarten children. We have 720 kindergarten children in that school. So the, we get about 60 classes each year, you know, for hands-on learning. So the kids learn everything from planting, watering, weeding. So it, that garden is an asset for the school and for the children in the neighborhood. So we try our level best to provide that kind of support to the school and especially um, for the women. And it is not like that we don't have challenges. It, these are the success part of the story. We do have a lot of challenges. Most of the programs, as I said, we are running um, through, it's a volunteer base. And we are not a non-profit organization. We, are not, we don't have any charitable status. We are just a group. And because we are a group, and because I'm a woman, I do get you know a pushback every time. And um, our work had been so successful, and the park model has is has been so successful. It's a Canadian park model, because all the work that the women's committee has done in the park, we have uh, been recognized by City Parks Alliance, which is U.S. based, and it was the first time that the Canadian park was selected as a frontline park. And uh, and when I was asked to nominate RV Burgess, I thought it is it was simple, really simple. Just send the pictures and just talk about the work we had been doing. And I did that and I completely forgot until I got a response from them telling, oh your park has been selected. So it was a very a uh, big achievement for us. Before I could realize that, I got a call from emails from the city. They had a press release, and I'm like, oh, right, really? Is it so huge and so big? So we had a really, um, you know, a press release and a lot of big uh, dignitaries talking about RV Burgess. I'm not sure whether they visited RV Burgess or not, <laughs> but yeah, but they were really positive about building. Um, you know, the community in public space. And um, we, um, we also have um, uh, indi indigenous dance performance because um, we have uh, uh, people from First Nations living in Thorncliffe. And we always connect um, the First Nations with the Thorncliffe neighborhood because this neighborhood is a landing mat for the immigrants. So it really makes sense to have that connection. And it was the first time in 2010 that we introduced First Nations to this immigrant community. And it was amazing to see how the immigrant population were meeting the old Canadians, the real Canadians. So, and I also sit at the citizenship uh, ceremony committee. I sit at various committee and I make sure that we have people from First Nations talk about their history to the new Canadians. So that element I have been adding to the citizenship ceremony, which is so great to know the history of uh, Canada. And uh, thank you. And. Um, Uh, the challenges, um, I would say, like, when uh, with all the success uh, in the park, with the programming and empowering women, we always have this uh, pushback from the big organizations, uh, being a grassroots that, uh, you know, personally, I had been experiencing that. And I was like, when you experience that from a very close friends of yours whom you trust, you really feel bad about it. And then you are disturbed with that. So I was through a very bad phase for two years. And then I realized 
like I am having this programming and it is all based on we are empowering women in our neighborhood so if we don't empower ourselves it doesn't make any sense so we have to stand up so you know I started talking about it I had been really transparent I will say that this is what I don't feel good about and I have to be really clear being it is not being a woman and it's not being uh, women with a hijab but it's all about what you're doing it's all about the work and it's all about you it's women and men we talk about equality every time so we have to show that it's not just about talking or it's not just in a book you have to be really practical so I had I had been experiencing that with the women of color the recently what the incident I would definitely would like to share that we had like in the market we had some people coming in who don't register as a vendor but have their own stall and have argument with us because we have the permit for the there is a process to participate in the market and then when I had the conversation with the guy he told you are telling me because I'm black I do look at my color it's not because you're black. It is about the system. I do get a pushback from women from our culture as well because it is challenging. People take you for granted because you're from the same community. You're from the same culture. So the, there are challenges with the people when you're in the same culture as well. You, you, they take it for, you for granted. But there are certain um, rules and regulations. People talk about the rights but they don't talk about the responsibilities because they both go hand in hand with each other when you have a right you have a responsibility so this is what we had been advocating uh, in Thorncliffe Park and it is interesting and each day I learn something from somebody yeah, and we try our level best to see you know that we empower women and it gives me a satisfaction when they say you know this really worked out what you have done has really worked out and we have seen how our programs or the support that we give the women, the women in Thorncliffe have a positive impact on the community and the neighborhood and thank you so much for listening to my story